My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving problems having to do with addition of fractions. Additions of addition of fractions, and we are on page number 14. Please turn to it, page number 14, and today is our lesson number 19. Let's get going. The very first problem that you see there, in the book, it's in the book is simply example number one. And the book is simply asking you to reduce this fraction, and that's all they're asking here. We're going to make it a little bit more interesting, and we're going to turn it into an addition problem, addition of fractions. Here's the addition, 7, 7, 20, 7 over 21 plus 6 over 18. 7 over 21 plus 6 over 18. Now, whenever we are asked, whenever we are asked to add two fractions or subtract two fractions, the very first thing we should ask, we should ask ourselves before we do any work at all, is to see if we can actually reduce these given fractions because if we can reduce them we'll have to do far less work far less work for example here we have a 7 on the top we have 21 on the top of course 21 is a multiple of 7 7 3 is a 21 or 3 7 is a 21 so we divide top and bottom by 7 7 becomes 1 and 21 becomes 3 so what we end up here is 1 over 3 1 third plus and here we have 6 over 18 again if we were to divide top and bottom by 6, 6 3 is 18. So 6 becomes 1, 18 becomes 3, this is also 1 third. So instead of doing the work the way it was given to us, if we reduce it like this, we can immediately see that 1 third plus 1 third is going to be 2 third. The answer is 2 third. Let's do one more. Example number 2, which is also on the same page, page number 14, and they are asking us, 12 over 20, 12 over 20 plus 28 over 70, plus 28 over 70. Now 12 over 12 over 70 is all you're going to see in the book. This part is our, our invention because we want to do addition of fractions. But in the book itself, in the book, they are simply asking you to reduce, reduce the fraction of 12 over 20. Let's see what we can do. Again, before we do any work at all, because if you try to find the common denominator of 20 and 70, or 21 and 18, it will create a lot of work. Let's see if we can reduce it. We see 12 on the top, we see 20 on the, on the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. So we divide top and bottom by 2, 12 will become 6 and 10, 20 becomes 10. And similarly here, we see 28 and we see, we see 70. 28 and 70 have a common factor of 7. Let's divide the top and bottom by 7. Let's divide the common factor by the common factor. 28, 7 fourths, 7 fourths are 28. If we were to divide 28 by 7, we get 4. And 70 divided by 7 is just going to be 10. So what do we end up with? We end up with 6 tenth plus 4 tenth. 6 tenth plus 4 tenth is just 10 tenth. It's just 1. Nothing to it. It's just 1. Let's do one more on the next page, page number 15. Page number 15. Example number 3. Page number 15, well it doesn't say example number 3, it says example number 1 for some strange reason. Example 1. And the first example on page number 15, they're asking us to find the least common denominator of 3 quarter and 7 ninth. 3 quarter plus plus 7 ninth. Instead of finding the least common denominator and stopping at that point, we finish, we're going to finish it up. We're going to actually add these two fractions. So in order for us to find, if in order for us to be able to add these two fractions, they have to have the same denominator. They, they must share a common denominator. And the common denominator can anything that anything that you want to be. For example, here, 4 times 9 would do, to, would do the job nicely. So the, th the common denominator here is 36. But instead of 36, if you had said that the common denominator here is 360, 
or if you have said that the common denominator here is 360 million, yes, 360 million will also serve as a common denominator. So which 72? 72 is 36 times 2. 72 would also serve as a common denominator. It's just that if you make the common denominator a very large number, you'll have to do a lot more extra work. And hence, the preference for the least common denominator. The smaller the common denominator that you can find, the less work we will have to do. And therefore, one prefers to have the least possible one. And it is called the LCD. L C D. The least common denominator here is simply 36. And how do we find that? It's very simple. Look, this is this is 3 over 4, this is 7 over 9. As you can clearly see, 4 and 9 have nothing in common. 4 and 9 share no factors in common. And since they have nothing in common, therefore the simplest, easiest, quickest way to figure out the least common denominator is to simply take your first fraction and multiply it by 9 over 9. We're not changing anything. 3 quarter is still 3 quarter because 9 over 9 is just 1. We have simply taken the 3 quarter and multiplied by 1. Similarly here we have 7 over 9. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4 over 4. Again we have not changed anything because we're multiplying by 1. 4 over 4 is 1. 7 9 times 1 is still 7 9. Now we can clearly see we have this common denominator. 9 times 4, 9 times 4. We have the same denominator. Now that the denominator is same, we are home free. We can take care of the top part. So 9 3 is at 21, plus 7 4 is at 28. And at the bottom, I'm going to erase all of this now. Now in the bottom, we find the common denominator of 9 times 4, which is 36. Let's add them up. 21 plus 28 is going to give us 49. As you can clearly see, 49 is more than 36. So let's subtract 36 from here. And we find 3 and 1. So what this means is that this part, 21 plus 28 is 49. So what we end up with here is 49 over 36. We can leave it like this. The top is more than the bottom, which means it's an improper fraction. We must convert it into a mixed number. 49 is simply, as you can see here, 49 is simply 36 plus 13. So we can write our 49 as 36 plus 13 over 36, which in turn simply means 36 over 36 plus 13 over 36. And 36 over 36 is just 1, so the final answer is 1 and 13 36. That's it. 13 36 is the answer. In my notes I have 19 36. I don't know why 19. Did I make a mistake here? I have no idea what the hell I was doing in my, in my work here. 36. On the top I have 55. We have 21. Oh, that's not a 21, that's a 27. That's why it's different from what I have in my notes. So I have to fix it. Instead of erasing everything, I'm going to actually fix it. I made a mistake here, as you can clearly see. I was thinking about 7 times 3. It's not 7 times 3, it is 9 times 3. I don't know what happened to this marker. It's dead as a dodo. 9 times 3 is 27. This is, this is not 21, this is 27. I put down 20, 21, instead of 21 is 27, that means it's 6 more. It is 6 more, it's not 59, it is 6 more, that's 55. And if that's 55, then instead of, if you have, if you have 55 here, instead of, instead of 13, it's going to be 19. There you go, instead of 13, it is 19, and it's 19 over this, there you go. The answer is 1 and 19, 36. And now that agrees with what I have in my notes. I made a mistake. I don't know why I was thinking about 7 times 3. Perhaps because I saw 7 here. That's what it is when you don't pay when you don't uh, when you don't pay attention, when one does not concentrate, that's what one tends to do. One tends to muck up the whole thing as I just did. It's very important that you pay attention. Do you understand? If you want to get a decent score in the exam, it's a very simple strategy. The strategy is simply to watch this video and do what I and do exactly what, and don't do rather and don't do exactly what I do in the videos and you'll be fine as long as you don't do what I do you'll be fine because as you see I end up making idiotic mistakes let's do the next one shall we we are on the next page uh, just give me one second here which one did we just finish we finished example number one
we just did uh, 3 quarter plus 7 ninth. Let's move on to example number 2. Let's move on to example number 2. Which is 3 twelfth plus 1 eighth. Same page, example number 2. 3 twelfth plus 1 eighth. Again, before we do any work at all, let's see what the book actually is asking. Again, the book in the book, they are simply asking us to find the least common denominator. We're not going to stop at the least finding the least common denominator. We're going to actually finish the job. We're going to add the two fractions. But before we worry about adding the two fractions, and before we worry about finding the least common denominator of 12 and 8, you will see that you will reduce your work quite a lot if you simply reduce the fractions if you can. Of course, that can never be reduced, but if there is a fraction we can reduce, let's do that first. If you find any opportunity at all to reduce the given fractions, either uh, it doesn't matter whether you are being asked to add them or subtract them, if you can reduce the fractions that are given to you, all of them or uh, any one of them, do it right for right away. You will see that in most cases you will save yourself a great deal of headache. 3 over 12 is simply 1 quarter. It's simply 1 quarter. So what do we end up with? We end up with I'm going to pick up speed now because I've been going at too much of a leisurely pace. We end up with 1 quarter plus an 8. The smallest common denominator that you can find of 4 and an 8 is 8. How do we, this is already 8, how do we make this into 8? It's very simple. Multiply top and bottom by 2. In other words, in other words what we're saying is that 1 quarter is same as 2 8. Of course 1 quarter is same as 2 8 because if we reduce 2 8 you get a quarter. So that's it, we're done. Here we have an 8. Here we have a 8, we have a common denominator, it's just 2, 1 times 2 is uh, one, 2 times 1 is uh, 2, and then plus 1 over 8. The answer is quite straightforward, the answer is 3 8. The answer is 3 8, the sum of 3 12 and 1 8, 1 8 turns out to be 3 8, because 3 12 is simply a quarter, and quarter of course is simply 2 8, 2 8 plus an 8 would be 3 8. Let's do next one. In the next one, they are asking us to convert the improper fraction into a mixed number. They are giving us an improper fraction. Our job is to convert into a mixed number. Example number... It doesn't have a number. 17, 17 over 5. As you can see, it's an improper fraction because 17 is more than 5. How do we convert into a mixed fraction? It's very simple. Let's break up 17 into 15 plus a 2 over 5, which in turn of course is the same as 15 over 5 plus 2 over 5, which in turn boils down to 15 divided by 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3, so it's 3 and 2 fifths. There is your answer, 3 and 2 fifths. Let's do the next one. The next problem that we see there is actually on the top of page number 16 on the top of page number 16. And the problem is 5 and 2 thirds. 5 and 2 thirds. Is that what they're asking? Yes. 5 and 2 thirds, they're asking us to convert that into an improper fraction. They're giving us a mixed number. We have to convert this into improper fractions. Very simple, very straightforward. 5 and 2 thirds is, is the same as 5 plus 2 thirds. Now 2 thirds is a denominator of 3. This guy has a denominator of 1. 5 is the same as 5 over 1. It has to have the same denominator. It has to have the same denominator before we can add these two quantities. How do we make the bottom into a 3? Multiply top and bottom by 3. Multiply top and bottom by 3. Now we end up with 3 times 5, which is 15 over 3, plus 2 over 3, which in turn simply means 17 over 3. 73 is same as 5 and 2 thirds, because if you have 17 thirds, if you have 17 thirds, you can easily break those 17 thirds into 15 thirds and 2 thirds, and 15 thirds is just 5. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.